Hey there, I'm John Zimmerman with Upper Creek Angler, and we're continuing our work through Steve Scoose's book, Grayling Flies. This is fly number 68, the caseless caddis. We'll start with um, several turns of lead wire over the entire shank of the, the not the entire shank of the hook, but a, a big portion of it. And then to assist us in uh, the taper making, of this fly will come in and add a second layer of um, lead wire to the top of the the top of the body. Once we have um, the lead in place, we'll start our thread. I have some nano silk in 12O in um, in this bobbin. Uh, really just about any color uh, would suffice. The dubbing on this is going to be used such that you're really just going to color whatever color thread that you that you have in there. And we'll reach in and build some thread dams behind both of the sets of lead. And come in and clip out our, our waist. And what I'm going to do at this point is come in and tie this thread off and um, tie in a second color of or a second piece of thread that's got a much bigger diameter to it so that I can cover this lead up more quickly. This is not in the, um, the instructions in the book, but I do often do it when I'm um, just to save a little bit of time in um, covering up thread wraps on over lead. It can also be a, um, a time saver when you're having to work on um, tapers to use a um, thicker diameter thread to help you with the taper on a big fly. On a small fly, certainly that would be a hindrance, but on a big fly, it can most definitely be helpful. Um, we'll come in and smooth this little transition point out because it will be important to have a smooth transition right there to the rest of the body. Now again, this is going to be all dubbed, so it does not have to be by any means perfect or sound. It will all come out in the wash. Tie that off, and then we'll go back to our um, to our nano silk. And we're just going to work our way back to the back of the fly, where we're going to start um, the majority of our work. We have some. 20,000th millimeter monofilament that will be the ribbing for this fly. That we're, we're going to tie that in first because we're going to use it last. And then we're going to tie in a piece of prepared nymph skin. I prepared it by cutting a V into it so that we could tie it down right on top of the hook. And we'll come down. We don't want to go too far down into the bend because if we obscure the bend too much, then um, we would not be able to actually land fish on this fly. So uh, now what we'll do is we will come after our taper looks pretty solid. We're going to use two different colors of dubbing on this. I have some bleached ginger colored dubbing for the primary body of the fly. Just dub this on a, really you're just looking, if you're using a, a different color 
thread than the kind of cream color that I'm using. I think it calls, it calls for black in the book. Um, you're really just looking for enough dubbing to really color the thread. I always forget when I'm doing these videos that my camera lens is about two inches away from this hook and if I put too much on the bobbin thread I'm not gonna get I'm gonna rock the camera we're not doing much dubbing at all um, and this uh, spectra blend lots of Antrony stuff in it if it gives you trouble going on um, if you'll Moisten your fingers a little bit. It'll go on a little bit more smoothly. So we had a slight battery failure, but we are back in operation. And um, all that we are doing is um, bringing this bleach ginger thread covered um, in some bleach ginger dubbing toward the, the top of the hook. There's um, really nothing difficult about this fly, but um, it's a super productive uh, pattern overall. really just trying to um, as the the text of the book says color the thread if you're not using a, um, a thread that's very similar in color to the the dubbing that you're using just wisps you um, hopefully will have done the the work of the shaping of the fly in the um, earlier portions so for the um, the top of the fly, we're going to reach in and pull out some, um, this is some black squirrel dubbing. We're going to dub this quite loosely because we will want to reach in with a, a dubbing brush and pull a lot of these feathers out anyway for some legs. Some of these dubbing fibers uh, for some legs. more poles and uh, now at this point we'll take our nymph skin and pull it tight across the back of the fly lift this up firmer grasp on it and make a, um, a couple committal tie uh, wraps in front and then um, a couple committal wraps back here as well. What you'll want to do is check to make sure that the um, the scud back or, or whatever material that you are using for the the back of the fly is that it is um, centered on the back of the hook and um, now we will take our monofilament and ribbit being sure that we're keeping an eye on um, not allowing 
the nymph skin through the processes of torque to move too far over the hook so that it stays right on top for us. Once we reach the top, we'll reach in with our thread, cross the the monofilament. Go in and clip that out. And to um, save all of our work, we will go in and um, do a quick little whip finish here. And at this point, I'm going to do any tidying up that I, I need to. I've got a little bit of the vinyl to clip out. And um, we'll take a darkly colored Sharpie and color our thread. Uh, this is one thing if you're really looking to economize on um, fly tying materials, thread is something that you can easily economize on because you can buy it in um, one or two colors that you use often. And then. Um, color the thread as needed to form the the heads of flies or or whatever go ahead and cut that waste out and um, for the last bit of this fly we'll take a um, a velcro brush and pull a lot of these um, squirrel dubbing fibers out for the legs on this caddis fly. And so there you have it. This is fly number 68, the caseless caddis from Steve Scoots' book, Grayling Flies. Again, fly number 68, the caseless caddis from Steve's Goose's book, Grayling Flies. <laughs>